This is the toiletry bag that you have been waiting for. On this tutorial, I'm going to take you through how to sew up this bag pattern. It is called the Nyeway bag. It is a toiletry bag that will take you on nights away. See what I did there? And it has got a few little features that I think you're going to enjoy. I'm going to share all my tips and tricks as we go along this tutorial as well. If you have any questions, comments or queries at all throughout the video, do pop them in the comments box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also in the description you're going to find a list of all the timestamps so you can skip ahead to the bit that you need in case you get stuck at a certain point. You're going to find in the description as well a link to the pattern. So let's get started. Okay so the first thing you're going to want to do is to download the pattern and you can find a link for that in the description below. Then you're going to cut out and get ready with all of your supplies that you're going to need. So you're obviously going to cut out your pattern pieces and then you're going to cut out your outer fabric and your lining. For this tutorial I am using a faux leather, this kind of vinyl, um, and I'm going to be using a waterproof canvas for the lining. Because I have chosen these two fabrics that means I don't need to interface at all or add stabiliser for this project. You can find out a bit more information about that in the instructions. If you are using a fusible foam or fusible fleece, you're going to want to cut out around these rectangles a little bit wider, especially if you're using foam, so that the seam allowance and everything can sit really nicely underneath. When we cut this out of our paper pattern, you want to make sure you are not cutting it out of the outer or the lining this is just for placement but like I say if you're using a stabilizer like foam or fleece you're going to want to cut a little bit wider than that to allow for pressing it through. You're also going to want to prep up your hardware so we've got two smaller zippers with our pulls attached and we've got one longer zipper with two pulls facing each other. I've also got your webbing straps. You could of course instead of using webbing use a um, quilting cotton or your outer vinyl if your machine is strong enough to go through those layers. Totally up to you. I'm using webbing so I have fused the ends as well with a lighter very carefully just to keep those really nice and stop fraying. Of course we're also going to be using a clear vinyl or you could be using mesh for your project. This tutorial I'm going to be using this clear vinyl. I've popped all the links to everywhere that I got the products in this video in the description below. For this tutorial I'm also going to be using cork and that is for the gusset of the bag. Because it is a bound bag I'm also going to be using bias binding. I have actually made my bias binding out of the waterproof canvas and I did a few little tests with this. You do need to be careful and use teflon sheet or baking paper just so that you don't touch the iron onto the waterproof canvas because of course it can melt so be really careful if you're going to use the same. This of course is going to make it waterproof on the inside of the bag which as I'm going to be using it as a toiletry bag that's really important but you could use ready-made or ready-bought bias binding too. It's a lot easier to make the bias binding with the waterproof canvas on the straight of the grain rather than on the bias because the parts where we're going to be adding our zipper, so it's going to be going onto the bottom of pattern piece 5 and the top of pattern piece 6, we're going to be adding our bias binding onto there. So I want it to be quite straight, so I have cut these on the straight of grain, whereas the bias binding that's going to go around the curves, so it's going to go around this pattern piece here eventually, I want that to have a little bit of stretch so I have cut that across the grain and added a few pieces together to get the length that I need. If you have any questions at all throughout this tutorial please do pop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. There is also a Facebook group which I have linked in the description too. Please do ask any questions in there and share your makes when you're finished as I love seeing your finished creations. You're also going to be using regular sewing tools as well, I'm sure you already have, like your scissors, your double-sided sewing tape, really important that is sewing version. You're going to be using a ruler and a tape measure, a heat removable pen and of course our trusty clips. And if you're choosing to add rivets to your handles you're going to want a few small scraps of Decaville as well. 
Okay, so we're going to start off with the inside zipper pocket, which is our clear or mesh panel. So you're going to need one of pattern piece six, one of pattern piece five. You're going to need your short zipper with the pull attached, two small pieces of bias binding and two pieces of bias binding that measure the length or the width of those two pieces. So starting off with the zipper, as you may be able to see, I have marked the middle of my zipper just for in a little bit. I'm going to be using that. Then I'm going to place the bias bind, the small pieces of bias binding on each end. I'm opening it up and I'm placing it right sides together. And I'm going to do the same on the other end. As you can see, it doesn't matter the height of the bias binding because we're going to cut that off in a little bit anyway to match. I'm going to stitch along in those ditches, in those folds on each end to secure them to the zipper tape. Then I'm going to bend the bias binding around the end of the zipper tape, clip it in place and top stitch along the top there. And I'm doing the top stitching at a three and a half stitch length and I'm doing my main structural seams at a three stitch length. Now I can chop off that excess bias binding close to the zipper tape. And we're going to repeat that with the other short zipper. Okay, we're going to pop that zipper to one side and we're going to grab our pattern piece six and we're going to lay our strip of bias binding along that top edge. So like I said a little bit earlier, it's quite good to have this on the straight of grain, but it doesn't matter too much if you've got one that is cut on the bias. So I'm just popping my double sided tape along that top edge to make it really nice and smooth. Using this clear vinyl can be a little bit sticky. If you're finding it sticks to the bottom of your, or the base of your machine, you can use baking paper, uh, masking taped down to your machine with a little hole for your needle and your foot plate and that can help with the stickiness. So we get that nice and straight. Then we're going to stitch in the ditch all the way along. Now that's stitched, we can then fold that over and around that top edge. And I'm going to just pop a couple of clips in there. And we're going to measure and find the middle of that top edge. Then I can match that up with the middle line on my zipper. And what you can do is you can use more double sided to help you. So I'm actually going to place another line of double sided. It does mean you use up your double sided quite quick, but it makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> And when you're folding this around, you want to make sure that the bias binding doesn't go lower on this side than it did on the other side. Now, there are arguments about which way you can do it round, but I quite like this way because no matter what, that front edge is not going to peel up because you've done that first line of stitching. So I'm going to match up that mark there. And we need to make sure it's matched up in the middle because, as you can see, the zipper is shorter than the width of pattern piece six. Okay, so I'm going to top stitch that. What I quite like to do is do two lines of stitching with a little stitch at each end so we're not breaking the stitch. Just go down one side up and then along the other. That gives it a nice decorative finish but also it stops it peeling up from either edge. I'm 
going to cut off the end of that bias binding because we don't need that anymore. And we're going to repeat that on the top edge with pattern piece five and the top edge of the zipper. And you want to have about a centimetre between the two edges of your bias binding. And then we're going to repeat that whole process with the other pattern piece six, pattern piece five and the other short zipper. Okay, so those two are ready to go. So I'm gonna just pop them to one side for later. And we're gonna move along to doing our straps and our strap connectors. So we're gonna need our two pieces of webbing. We're gonna need our main panel, pattern piece one. And we're gonna need our strap connector facings. Now it does tell you the measurements in the pattern, but we're going to use our template for this tutorial. So I'm going to lay my template over the top. I'm going to get my strap connector, which is pattern piece seven, strap connector facing. I'm just going to give a little crease in the middle. That's going to find our midpoint. I'm just going to measure and mark our midpoint on the rectangular hole. And about there, it doesn't have to be exact. And that's going to help us with placing our pattern piece seven. So we're going to lay that down so it's right sides together, like so. Pattern piece seven is a square, so you don't need to worry too much which way up it goes. I like to have a little bit overhanging at the top and then we're gonna draw our rectangle through. Now, because I'm using waterproof canvas and vinyl. I can't place any clips there at the minute, which is kind of frustrating, but I'm very carefully going to clip just along the edge there, two clips along the edge on both. Try and keep that as neat and as straight as we can. Take away my template. Then I'm going to stitch around those two rectangles and I'm going to use a slightly smaller stitch of two and a half. If I was using quilting cotton, I would use a probably a one and a half stitch, especially on those corners. When I'm sewing rectangles like this, I always like to start in the middle rather than on a corner. You're going to get a nice crisper edge that way. Then I'm going to cut through the middle. So I'm going to use some sharp pointy scissors, little scissors to try and get through. It's a bit tricky with that faux leather. And then I'm going to snip into those corners, being really careful not to snip the stitching. So it's a kind of fork at each end. Probably could have used sharper scissors, if I'm honest. <laughs> the closer you can get to the stitches without cutting the stitches, the neater your rectangle is going to be. Then I'm going to push it all the way through to the other side. Give it a bit of a finger press. If you're using quilting cotton, you can also press it at this stage. 
And we're actually going to want that top layer to fold down. So it's a bit like a welt pocket if you've ever made one of those. Repeat that on the other one. Don't be afraid to give it a wiggle to help those fibres lie nice and flat how you want them. Then we're going to insert our webbing handles. So to do that we're just going to pop the end of each strap into those holes that we've just made. I'm going to pop it over and we're going to have about an inch overhang. I'm just going to pop a clip in there to hold that in place. Same on that side. You want to make sure that your handle is not twisted when it goes through those two ends. Then we're going to stitch as close as we can to the top while making sure that everything is pulled really nice and taut. We're going to put a line of stitching there and then a line of stitching at the bottom to secure that handle in place and we're going to do that on both ends. As you're doing this you want to make sure that the handle hasn't slipped at all, that it is still parallel and you've got a nice right angle to the edge there. You can see that I've got that pattern piece one pulled right out of the way and then I'm going to stitch across. Now I've got that first line of stitching, I'm going to go to the bottom of the handle and do another line to catch that bottom for extra security. Now that handle is really nice and secure in there. You could leave it like that. You could just pop a rivet in there or you could stitch a rectangle all the way around. Totally up to you. I quite like the look of a finished top stitch or just doing a rivet. So you can choose whichever combo. Today on this tutorial, I'm just gonna pop a rivet under there and the rivet will go between those two lines of stitching so as not to break the stitches. But before I put the rivet in, I'm of course going to secure the other end of the handle. This time I'm not going to break the stitches, I'm just going to continue down along that edge and back up at the bottom of the webbing. And you're riveting through all of those layers. Just popping a layer of Decaville light in there as well to give it a little bit of extra strength. If you had fabric that you confused to, like quilting cotton, then of course you're going to press that in place, but I don't have that luxury with these fabrics. So I'm just going to pop that there and it will still give it the extra strength it needs. Okay, one side's got our handles in, we're going to repeat that for the other pattern piece one and the other webbing handle. Okay, so now we've got the front and the back pattern piece ones finished, so we're just going to put that to one side and we're going to go to the gusset and the long zipper. So you've probably already put your zippers on, just make sure the, the pulls are on facing each other. And then we're going to need our pattern piece four, which is our hinge. We're also going to need our gusset pieces which is pattern piece two. Okay so starting with pattern piece four which is the hinge we're going to go with our outer piece. We're going to have this right side up on the table and we're going to have our long zipper right side down and then we can use double-sided tape or you can baste it in place. I'm going to use double-sided tape just to hold it there. Then we're going to get our other pattern piece for the lining hinge and we're going to place that right side down onto the back of the zipper and I'm going to put some more double sided and we're going to stitch that in place with a one centimetre seam allowance. 
Okay, so that's stitched in place. We're then gonna do the same with the other end of the zipper. So we're just gonna push it all out of the way. We've still got our outer right side up, just like we did before. A Little bit of tape. Zipper right side down, make sure it's not twisted in the process. So it's like that. Then we're gonna get our outer, uh, sorry, our lining, and place that right side down. A little bit more tape. And I'm gonna stitch that again with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so when you're finished stitching, it will look like this. Then what you can do is you can just flip it so that it's on the right way out and you'll see that you have one continuous loop. And we're gonna to top stitch along the outer pieces of the hinge about two millimeter or about a sixteenth of an inch from the edge of the zipper. And again, I'm doing my top stitch at three and a half. A little trick, when you're top stitching, you can cast off in the seam allowance along the other edge that you are not sewing. I'm gonna pop that to one side for a little bit and we're gonna move on to the main gusset. You're also going to need pattern piece three, the placket hinge for this bit as well. I'll put my lining to one side, grab my outers. Okay, so with pattern piece two right side up, the outer pattern piece two, we're gonna grab our pattern piece three outer, and we're gonna place that right sides down, and then we're gonna stitch along that edge with a one centimeter or three, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna pop a clip in there, because at the same time, when I go over to the sewing machine, I'm gonna pull that along, and I'm gonna match up the other short edge. So you're making a continuous loop with pattern piece two and pattern piece three. So that's one centimeter, three eighths of an inch seam allowance on both edges. Okay, so I've stitched those in place and then we're gonna open it out so that it's right sides out. And we're gonna push the seam allowance towards the long sides. Okay, so it's pushing it away from that middle piece. And then we're gonna to top stitch about two millimeters or about a sixteenth of an inch from the edge. We're also going to repeat that with the other outer piece. So we've got two the same, both with the seam allowance going towards the longer strip. And we're gonna repeat it with our lining pieces. But with the lining pieces, we are not going to do the top stitch. Okay, so you've got your four pieces like that. The outer with the top stitch, the lining without the top stitch. If you're using quilting cotton for your lining, you can then go ahead, you're gonna to want to press your seam allowance towards the shorter pieces. That way you've got the outer seam allowance going towards the longer pieces and the lining seam allowance going towards the shorter pieces and this is gonna nest your seams and create less bulk later on. I'm gonna try and do a little bit of a finger press to keep that in place. Okay, so now we've got all of our main components, we're gonna get ready to stitch them together. But before we do that, we want to mark the halfway and the quarter points on each of them. So we need to do that on the placket lining and outer. We also need to do that on our long zipper, our pattern piece ones, and we need to do that on our linings for the pattern piece ones, and we need to do that on our clear panels as well. Now, when you're marking out your 
middle and quarter marks. You're also going to want to check that your zipper pocket panel is the same size as your lining pattern piece one. If it's a bit bigger, you can chop it down. Don't worry if it's a smidge smaller. Mine is like a millimetre smaller. Don't worry about that. But if it is bigger, then you want to chop that down to fit. OK, so now we've got all our marks put on all the different pieces for halfway and quarter. We're then going to have one of our outer plackets or hinges. We're going to have that right side out or right side up. We're going to get our long zipper and we're going to place that right side down to one of the outer hinges. And we're lining up all those marks. And to start with, we're going to line up those two hinge seam allowances. And we're going to use our trusty double-sided tape, put that all the way around and then we're going to baste it, we're going to attach it with the double sided tape and then we're going to baste it half a centimetre or three sixteenths of a seam allowance from the edge. And as we go around, we're going to make sure that our marks are matching up. And when I'm basting, I'm using a long stitch. So on my machine, that's a number six length. Okay, so now I've basted that in place, we're then gonna get our zipper pocket panel and we're gonna place that right sides down. So you see hopefully that the zipper edge that I've just stitched is facing up. I'm going to grab our zipper pocket panel, put that face down and we're matching up. So we've got the hinge at the bottom here and the bottom mark there of the zipper pocket and we're matching that up. I'm going to clip that in place. I'm going to go around and clip that all the way around. You could also use double sided tape to hold that in place, which I think I will do because I'm using that clear vinyl. It's going to make life a lot easier. When doing this, I like to match up the four marks first top and bottom, left and right, and then you can ease the rest out as you go. And you're gonna find that you're gonna to need to use clips and double-sided tape this is the trickiest part of the whole bag. So just take it slowly and go at your own pace. It's particularly tricky on those corners. If you find that you are struggling a bit, you can actually snip into the outer part to help it go around that curve. Just do a few stitches. Doesn't matter if you go through your basting stitches like I have, and that's gonna help ease it around. When you do those snips, you just want to make sure that you're staying within your seam allowance. Okay, once you've done that and you've wrestled with it and you've got it laying as smoothly as you can, we're going to sew that in place, basting around the edge with a half a centimetre seam allowance, ready for the next step. It's worth noting as well that if I was using quilting cotton and mesh for this, which I would recommend if you're a little bit more on the beginner side of bag making, then I would be stitching from the other way up and I would be using a zipper foot. This is almost the same width as a zipper foot, so it's a nice thin foot basically um, because it's a lot easier to do it the other way up. But because I've got this clear vinyl, I want to make sure that that is facing my Teflon foot and not the base of the machine, which can get a little bit sticky.
Okay, so now that's basted in place, we're gonna get one of our lining plackets and we're gonna place it right side down on the back of that zipper pocket panel. And remember, we're pushing our seam allowance towards that smaller hinge and we're gonna clip that in place. You can use double-sided again if you want to, all the way around. And we're gonna stitch that in place with a quarter inch seam allowance this time. And that's gonna be our structural seam, so we wanna do that on a regular stitch. So for me, that's a three stitch length. Same as before, matching up the top and the quarter marks, top and bottom, and then the two sides, or the halfway and quarter points. It's worth noting as well where your zipper pulls are because you do not want to be sewing through those by accident. Okay, then we're going to flip the two plackets so that they are wrong side together. We're going to open up that small inside zipper. We're going to match up the notches from the lining and the outer and we're going to clip it all the way around the top raw edge. Remember we're nesting the seam so we're pushing the lining towards the short hinge and the outer will already be pushed towards the longer piece because we top stitch it earlier. Then we're going to base that in place half a centimetre or three sixteenths of an inch from that raw edge. Okay, then we're going to pop that to one side while we do the next part. We're going to grab one of our pattern piece one lining panels and we're going to grab one of our pattern piece one outer panels and we're going to place them wrong sides together. And we're going to clip and baste all the way around the edge and again this is half a centimetre or three sixteenths of an inch from the edge. It's important when we sew this that we don't catch the handle so just be careful when you go around that part. Okay so I've basted that in place but I've also done the same with the other pattern piece one outer and lining. It's going to make it a lot easier for the next steps. So now we're going to attach our outer main panel to the placket and the zipper that we did earlier. So we want to have it so that the placket has got the lining on the outside like so. We're going to grab one of our outer panels, place it right sides down so it's right sides together and we're going to match up those notches that we made before, making sure the handle's on the inside as well. We do not want to be catching hold of that handle. And we're going to clip all the way around the outside, like I say, matching up those notch marks as we go. 
and then we're going to stitch with a half a centimeter or three sixteenths of an inch seam allowance from the edge because in the next step we're going to do the final stitch to which is our construction stitch just like before if you're finding it tricky to go around that corner we can snip into that straight edge to have it lie flat Now I'm not going to lie, this can be a bit of a wrestle. You can't really have too many clips when you're doing this. Just take it slow when you stitch, use a stiletto or an awl to help you get around those corners and a zipper foot from the top side is a lot easier. And I'm using a slightly different stitch length because I am going over the similar holes and I don't want to perforate it in exactly the same place. So whereas before I was using a number six stitch length, I'm using a number four for this part. Okay, so now that's basted it in place, we're then going to bind that edge. So you want to find the bottom which has got the hinge and we're going to open up our bias binding so that the excess is going towards the inside. We're going to clip that in place but we're going to start, let's move it down a bit, we're going to start about an inch from the edge so that that is a kind of excess piece not stitched down. going to clip that all the way around and then we're going to take it to the sewing machine I'm going to make sure that there's excess on the end. Okay so that's clipped in place we've got loads of excess there I'm just going to fold that under make sure that I've got a nice inch or so because when we come to stitch it we're going to fold it with that bit under but because we're going to go around we may have a bit of extra so I'm not going to clip that in place yet I can do that at the sewing machine and make sure it's all sitting really nice now when we stitch this we're going to use a one centimeter seam allowance or three eighths of an inch and we're stitching in the ditch my bias binding because it's homemade and because it's waterproof canvas is a little bit all over so I'm going to try and go by my machine rather than that crease so just bear that in mind that if you've got the same issue as me you may want to take some care. Okay, so when it comes to this overlap, the end of the bias tape, I'm going to make sure that my first one is folded under or folded wrong sides together and then I'm going to lay the end over the top and then I'm going to carry on stitching to join up with my start point of my sewing. So I've got about an inch of the overlap there. I'm going to cut off the excess. Okay then we're going to cut off some of that seam allowance because that's going to help us get that bias tape around the edge edges. So I'm just going to snip that down especially on those corners. Then we're going to grab our bias tape, fold it around that edge, clip it in place 
and we're going to do a second line of stitching to secure the bias tape all the way around. So I'm going to stitch that all the way around the edge. I'm going to sew it from this top side and as I go I'm going to make sure that that fold is lined up with the stitch line that I did from the other side and that is going to help me get a really nice stitch all the way around with any luck. <laughs> and I've changed over to my zipper foot for this because it just can get around those curves a lot easier. Now if you are sewing on a domestic machine you're probably going to want to go up to a 110 needle and possibly a jeans needle as well. Okay, so as you can see, that's all ready to go now. We're gonna turn it through in a second, but before we do, I just wanted to mention, I have seen a lot of people talk about using a waterproof canvas, using it as binding and then trimming back. So what you would do is you would fold it over, just a, a strip, folded over, not, not folded inside, so you've got the two raw edges, folded around your seam, and then you would do your stitch. Sometimes you people glue it or just clip it in place. Do your stitch through all the layers and then trim back to that edge. And that's great if you've got a waterproof canvas which doesn't fray. I have found that the waterproof canvases I have used and I've tried this method a couple times, they do fray when, they, when you use the bag over time and it does get a little bit messy on the inside. So you may find that different waterproof canvases work with that technique, but that is why I wanted to show you with this kind of regular bias binding technique of doing stitching in the ditch and then stitching in the fold and then folding it over and folding it under so you've got absolutely no raw seams and you get a pretty neat finish at the end of the day this is inside your bag so there's a couple of wonky lines there not to worry about that but mostly it's pretty neat very unlikely you're going to see that especially in this bag okay so I'm going to reach through that open short zipper and I'm going to turn the bag the right way out with your clear vinyl, if you're using clear vinyl, you may find that you need to heat it up a little bit with a hairdryer. Be really careful when you do that, but that can help soften the clear vinyl so that you can turn it through if you're having any problems. This one though is totally fine. Okay, so with the raw edge of the zipper facing up we're going to grab our other outer placket and we're going to place it right sides together and we're going to line up again the notches that we made or the marks and the seam lines of those hinges again we're nesting those seams i'm going to clip all the way around You may find, like I've got here, you're going to need to ease it in a little bit. That's totally fine. Just try and keep to your marks, matching up your marks where you've got them. Again, you can use double-sided tape if you want to on this seam. Okay, so I'm going to take that over to the machine and I'm going to sew within the seam allowance. So I'm going to sew about half a centimetre or about three sixteenths of an inch all the way around. And that's going to be a basting stitch, so I'm going to do a stitch number six. And as you can see, I'm sewing with a zipper foot that's going to help me get nice and close to it. You can sew from either side, but it might be a little bit easier to sew from the kind of inside of the bag out. Thank you. 
Okay, so now that that's all basted in place, I'm going to open up the long zippers. And I can do this before you sew it, but I actually found it was a little bit easier. There's six of one, half a dozen of the other, to be honest. Um, but you can do it either way. So I have opened up that zipper after. If you've got a locking zipper, then you may need to reach through from the top of the bag and open it that way. But I'm sure most of you will be using zipper tape, so you won't have that issue. So you can open it from the back. Then we're going to grab our unstitched zipper pocket panel and we're going to place that right side down and we're lining up the notches from before top and bottom left and right and we're going to be base clipping and then basting it to the raw edge that we have just sewn remember just like we did before you may need to snip around the cur the corners and the curves on the placket to help it to fit around the curve of your zipper pocket panel and again, you can use double-sided tape if you want to, to help keep it in place. Once I get past that hinge part, I can actually pull out the kind of bulk of the bag that we sewed before, pull that out the way, and it's going to get a little bit easier. It's a bit tricky when you get near to the long zipper pull because that's kind of pushed against the hinge, so that's why another reason why it's good to use a zipper foot. Okay, so that's basted in place. I don't know if you noticed, but my machine really wasn't happy with my zipper foot on this clear vinyl. So I'm definitely gonna move across to my Teflon foot when sewing with this clear vinyl. Anyway, then we're gonna grab our lining placket, so the final um, lining piece, and we're gonna place that so that it is right sides towards the middle and we are lining up the bottom hinge just like we did before. We're nesting the seams so the seam allowance is going towards the hinge and then we're going to clip and baste that all the way around so that it's right sides towards the back of the back of the pocket. So the back of the clear vinyl or the back of the mesh. And I think this time I'm going to use double sided tape. And again, we're going to match up the notches that we made before. Okay, so that's all clipped in place. I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do a construction seam stitch. So I'm going to do a three stitch length and this is going to be a quarter of an inch or 0.6 centimeters from the edge. Because we've got that zipper in there, we do need to keep it at that seam allowance. And the main thing here, when you're sewing these seams, these kind of curved seams, with all this bulk, is to just go nice and slow, take it steady, use a stiletto, use a hump jumper if you need to, keep rearranging the fabric, making sure you're not caught anything else underneath that you don't want to, like the handle, etc and yeah go at your own speed don't doesn't need to be rushed so the lining is now stitched i'm going to chop off those clear vinyl corners just to make sure it lies a little bit nicer it's not the end of the world if it doesn't completely fit in there the pattern is made so that it fits but sometimes it's not so easy to get around those curves so don't beat yourself up if it doesn't lay as smoothly as you would like it to. Just like mine hasn't here. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna push the lining and the outer placket so that they are 
wrong sides together. You can see that the bag is starting to take shape. It's nearly there. Just two more lines of sewing. So I'm pushing it now so that we have got that first side of the bag inside that placket that we've just sewn. I'm trying to get it as flat and as neat out of the way, making sure those um, webbing handles are tucked really nice inside. Then we are going to match up the lines on the plackets, pop a clip in there and in fact we are going to also I'm not just going to do that because of the water resistant canvas being so slippery I'm going to pop a line of double sided tape it doesn't really matter how much tape we use um, and I have got this linked in the description as well if you want to grab the one that I use which is from Amazon there are some affiliate links in the description that just means at no extra cost to you that you're helping the channel by purchasing through those links. So again, I'm matching up those notch lines and of course the hinge seam allowances, nesting those so that one is going towards the smaller part of the hinge and the outer is going towards the outer part of the hinge, which it should do anyway because we top stitched it earlier. And I just think because we haven't added interfacing or stabilizer to these fabrics, because they are pretty sturdy, it does help to have that double sided tape because of course the stabilizer and the interfacing stops any give or stretch as much. Okay, so now that I've got that double sided there, I'm then gonna base that in place just to make it really nice and secure. And of course, we're gonna do that with a six stitch length. And I'm basting it half a centimeter or three sixteenths of an inch from the edge. Okay, so now that's stitched, we're then gonna grab our outer piece, our final piece to attach, and we're gonna match up the top and the bottom and the two side marks, just like we did on the previous side. And we're gonna stitch that again with a half a centimeter seam allowance because we're kind of basting it again before the binding. I am gonna use some more double-sided tape. You may think I'm crazy using so much, but it does really help. And if we need to, I'm gonna clip those corners to help it go around the corners of the pattern piece one. Now when you're matching this up you want to make sure that your webbing handles are the same matching at the top and you don't want to put your panel on upside down so just give that a double check. Okay let's get that stitched. Okay, so that's stitched in place. I'm gonna trim back those curves a little bit, just like we did with the clear vinyl. Make sure that zipper pocket is open, and then we're gonna grab our bias binding, and we're gonna bind the edge exactly how we did it on the other side of the bag. Now, when you're sewing this, you may also want to pull that first side out through the hole when you're sewing it. It's going to make it a little bit easier to get to it's less bulk when you're sewing that side. So you'll see that when you come to do it on the machine. So just like before, I'm going to open up the crease or the folded bias binding, stitch in the ditch going round. This is going to be my construction seam now, so that's going to be a number three stitch length. Then I'm going to fold it back around and do a top stitch to catch it all in place. If you missed that bit first time, you can find a link to all of the timestamps in the description below. And you wanna start and stop your bias binding on the side of the hinge, which is of course the bottom of our bag. And this is about a quarter of an inch seam allowance to go just past those original stitches. If 
when you come to fold the bias binding onto the other side for doing your top stitching, before you do your top stitching, you find that it doesn't quite fit by using that fold that you've made or that the bias binding came with, you can just eke out the bias binding. You don't have to do it on that fold. You can eke it out, give it a little bit more room to get around those bulky layers. Another option is to trim down some of that seam allowance. Okay, so with our binding done, all that's left to do is to turn the bag out through that side zipper or small zipper. Again, you can use a hairdryer gently to heat up the clear vinyl if you need to. Push out all the seams and we're done. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've picked up some tips and tricks along the way. Do subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. You can find that on the screen coming up right now.